All right, I'm getting ready to make an encaustic transfer. Now, these are a lot of fun, and I'm going to, going to show you the basics. Um, and once you have the basics, then you can go in any direction you like. But what I'll do is show you exactly how I make one of my pieces, and everybody makes their work a little bit differently, so you can use what works for you and disregard anything that doesn't. But um, So let me get started. I'll go step by step and show you exactly how I make a painting like this here. Now the first thing that I should mention is that transfers work best with a toner based copier or printer. Um, they don't really work with an inkjet, not to my knowledge. That being said, I don't have a toner based copier or printer and I've never used one for a transfer. What I do is I print my image in a, sort of a gray and I fill the gray areas in with a charcoal pencil. Now how do I get my image? This is a photo I took of my wife and my son Michael. I manipulate the photo on Photoshop and uh, then turn it into a grayscale and also flip the image because if you don't flip the image your your image will be in the opposite direction when it goes on the surface. So you flip the image in my case I fill this in with charcoal and then I put it onto my wax surface and burnish it in with a spoon. I'm going to make the painting on a 5 by 7 board and I've already glued paper to the surface of my board. Now I don't want to work on a perfect white ground because I, I just don't. I'm not interested in it. So what I'm going to do is take a little glue. It's almost like a blue stain that I've made with acrylic paint and stain the paper a little bit. Now that's not really as dark as I want it so I might have to get some more out of the tube. Notice how I said stain not paint. I don't want to cover the fibers. I still want the board to be absorbent. Uh, I just don't want a perfect white ground to paint on. So um, I'll dry this off with my heat gun. I've just used my heat gun to help speed the process, the drying process. Up. So again, the, this isn't a painted surface, this is a stained surface. Um, the, the fibers are still open and able to absorb the wax medium. Uh, and the other thing I should mention is this is what's called a heat gun and most encaustic painters use a heat gun to help manipulate their encaustic. It's designed for removing paint and you can buy it at most of your home stores or Sears, places like that. Uh, okay, now what I'm going to do is fuse wax onto the surface of my, my paper covered panel. I've taken a couple of minutes and he really heated the surface up of this panel so it absorbs the wax in. If I didn't do that, the wax would uh, lay very thickly right on top of the panel because you're putting a, a hot medium on a cold surface. It, it doesn't absorb as well. So now that I've got some wax on there, I'm going to take the heat gun again and fuse it in very evenly. Another thing I like to do is put some of the medium on the edge of the painting. Um, I just like the way that looks. And so once I put the medium on there, I'll fuse it in again with the heat gun. Now I have my surface and it's still a little warm, so I'm going to put this to the side and while it's cooling, I'll start to fill my image here with the charcoal pencil. My surface is now cool. And what I'm going to do is take a razor blade, and this just seems to be the tool I like to use, and just get some of the high, the high points of the, the surface off. You can see the little shavings. Okay, so that's pretty smooth. What I'm going to do now is take the heat gun again and fuse the surface just to get it even smoother, and then I'll be ready to put my transfer on it. Okay, that looks pretty smooth. 
Now I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. Some people let it become room temperature. I like it warm to the touch. I feel like the charcoal uh, absorbs better into the wax. So once it's ready, then I'll put the, the image down. So I have my surface and it's nice and smooth and it's a little warm to the touch. And that's the way I like it. Some people don't do it that way. Then I'll take my image that I just drew uh, or filled in with charcoal and flip it upside down and get rid of any of the excess charcoal. And now I've also put some reference lines down. I'm going to drop the encaustic block or the surface that I made right down on the painting. Or right down on the uh, drawing, I guess. And the paper will stick there a little bit, but you have to be careful and try to get the piece up just like this. And then I'll take a spoon and go over the image. And you want to be very thorough here to make sure the entire image is transferred to uh, the encaustic surface. Now I've spent a couple of minutes um, making sure I was very thorough burnishing the image into the encaustic with this spoon. Now, and this is the fun part, you take a little water and you just dissolve the paper with your hand and some water. And you can see the image coming through. You just take your time here and eventually the paper will dissolve and if everything works out right, uh, your image will be there. This just takes a couple of minutes and you'll get most of the paper off and then once the paper's off uh, you will dry the surface and then fuse the image in with your heat gun. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Most of the paper's off. I think all the paper's off, but even if there's little traces of paper, when I fuse the image in with my heat gun, which I'll do in a minute, that will make that paper uh, disappear. Now the very last step is to fuse the image into the encaustic medium with your heat gun. And you need to be very careful doing this or you can ruin your image. Uh, what I like to do is just take a couple of passes with the gun set on low and as I go over the image, you can sort of see the, the encaustic sort of um, liquefy slightly. And I, you don't stay in one spot too long. You move very quickly, fuse the image, and then, then you're done. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, again, that's the way I do encaustic transfers. There's a lot of different ways to do them. In fact, the way I do it may be a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but that's just what I like to do. Um, my advice is, if you haven't done it before, just work small. It's a lot easier working small until you figure out the finesse of the gun, how to work the heat gun. Um, and the other thing is just, just have fun with it. Uh, if you have a problem, if, like if this didn't work for me, um, more than likely I could heat the, the surface up and scrape the image off and just try it again. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show and I hope you got something out of it.